So mass size is the main uh, effector of decreasing your milk production in dairy farms. So you've got, uh, this, is, this is an infected uh, left right, or back right, I mean, sorry about that. Uh, as you can see, it's swollen, tender, warm, and obviously it's going to decrease the milk production. Uh, and the somatic cell count is going to be high, like Jonah said, it's just like leukocytes, just an indicator of an infection. So there's two main contributors, environmental and contagious. Uh, e. coli is the main one for environmental, and a way to reduce that is to change the bedding from an organic to an inorganic substance, so like wood chippings to sand or whatever. And I just toured a farm where they used sand and they actually filtered it out of their systems at the end and reused it, so way more economically beneficial too. Um, <laughs> staph is the biggest one for contagious um, and there's other ways to reduce that as well so you want to like milk your infected cows later because obviously and you want to separate them because they can just spread and uh, you don't want to milk them dry so you're just milking until there's no there's nothing being pulled down from the teat anymore because that causes the, the automatic milkers to actually push up some of the the milk left over, so that actually causes more of an infection because the bacteria travels up the teat cistern to the uh, teat gland and the gland, all the anatomy of that stuff, and it affects the <laughs> alveolus and uh, will actually reduce the production from there. So milking more frequently is another way to um, decrease your incidences, I guess. Um, but yeah. So the bacteria march up the teat orifice and infect that gland. Yeah, uh, because your entire udder is separated into four, four parts. Four quarters. Yeah. So that's why you have the California mastitis test right here. Each teat has its own little spot, and you pour this iodine solution in, and you swirl it around and see if there's an infection. And obviously, you're not going to do that for all cows on your entire farm, because that'd be ridiculously a huge waste of time. Right. So you just look for drops <coughs> in milk production, uh, during like main stress moments, so fresh and peak lactation, but also um, you can do your conductivity of your milk, so most automatic milkers have, they measure like an electrical current through it, so sodium chloride levels are a huge indicator of disease as well. Hmm. Ketosis. Um, so it's high ketone bodies, mostly associated with like, it looks like diabetes essentially on, on paper. Um, and there's a huge trend in younger cows and fresh, so right after they uh, calf. Because they're not eating as much and they're relying on their fat metabolism in their liver. So type 1 is actually when they're just fresh and essentially they're just not eating enough. And type 2 is when you're in peak lactation and it's that negative energy balance, you can't support producing over 100 pounds of milk a day. Yes, they have to pull off their fat somewhat, but too exactly. much is bad. Yeah. And another, another way to reduce it is to not increase your body condition score during dry off. So you want to keep it roughly the same. So your, your pre-fresh or pre-dry pre, pre -dry off <coughs> ration is very important for that. And milk fever, so this S shape in the neck over here is the biggest indicator that you have milk fever. Uh, essentially, it's just a calcium deficiency in the cow. Um, so what you want to do is actually lower the calcium levels in the feed like before, uh, before calving, so that way they can rely on their uh, calcium storage in their bones. Well, so so they can shift their metabolism from yeah. putting calcium into the bone to taking it off. Yeah, yeah because once, once they have that calf, they're producing milk like that, and they need to be able to metabolize it from their bones much quicker. And it's more common in old and fresh cows. Mm -hmm. But I didn't talk about DAs or RPs, those are displaced ablamasums and retained placenta, and we read about them a couple weeks ago, so, so I didn't, yeah. didn't feel like I needed to talk about it. Now the interesting thing about that cow is her neck is that way because she's got a halter on and she's tied that way, but those that have milk fever tend to look like that because oh, it looks yeah. like they're looking at their back end and they're often curved like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely hypocalcemia, and he's going to put an IV in the jugular vein. That's what he's popping here, and that's how you administer the treatment is IV calcium. Yeah, and same with ketosis, uh, but yep. it's just glucose or yep. glycerol for three or four days just for them to increase their uh, feed intake and get that negative energy balance back. 
And how do you find ketones in milk urine. or urine? Uh, just keto strips. Yeah, maybe you might want to tell them what a keto strip is. Uh, it's just like if you have a pool, you know, the pH strips, they change color. Same thing. You just hold Some it. Some people can smell it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I have never Very been able to, but there's a lot of people. If they're, it's, if they're really bad, you can smell it. And what does it smell like? Isn't that sweet? Acetone. Is that what someone said? It smells like acetone. It smells like acetone. Is it? Okay. Yeah. And you can smell it on their breath. Sometimes, or their urine, or their milk. I mean, they're just making ketone bodies like crazy. I know somebody who can actually like smell mastitis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, smell, smell mastitis. That's interesting. Yeah. Are you ready for questions? Yeah. Sure. Questions about these diseases? It's not really a question about the disease. I was going to ask you: Have you ever been to Jones's Dairy in Cass County? They have the automatic robot milker. I've So it's no. It, there's only like four in the world. We're going there next week for dairy management. Yeah, go there. You would enjoy it. They're the nicest people. They're one of our clients. But it's a robot does everything. Like, it's awesome. Cleans everything. They go on and milk. They listen. The cows listen to like a forty-year-old calf whining. <laughs> Like That's it's really cool. Like, and they take all the vet students out. So, yeah. in fact, I'm glad you said that. I'll show you a little video because last year, some that was in this class, they were, I think they were in Wisconsin. They had the robotic milkers. Yeah, there's only like four, I think, in the world. Well, I think there's more now. Is there? Yeah. Okay. I think there's there's more than Is four. Is there? Okay. It's, it's I, when I learned about it, there's only four. You know, they strip the teeth before. Okay. Okay. They do everything. The